Franklin Templeton is a very respectable name in the mutual fund industry worldwide. It is known for its investor centric policies, research, process driven conservative approach in management of funds which belong to the investors. In Franklin Templeton India yesterday something unusual happened. The company declared that six of its debt funds will be closed immediately. The investors in Franklin Templeton India funds are a worried lot today. In this episode, I am going to discuss all aspects of the story, how it can impact you, do you stand to lose any money, what's the way forward and what are the things that you need to be knowing. Dear viewers, this is NRA Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan Bhatt, Investment Consultant and a Financial Planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Franklin Templeton announced closure of its six of the debt funds which it was operating in India. It has about 40,000 crore or rupees managed under these six schemes. These were the popular schemes of Franklin Templeton in their debt fund category. What went wrong? Why did Franklin Templeton announced the closure of these schemes. To know this, we need to know a little bit about the debt funds. First, let's understand how a debt fund works. Unlike an equity fund, debt fund is a fixed income category fund. It will not have volatility of a stock market. But it does not resemble exactly like a fixed deposit which gives you a fixed rate of return and has a maturity date. A debt fund does not have a fixed return. But at the time of investing, you can know what is the rate of return you may get by investing in that fund. There are different categories of debt funds. There are guilt funds, you have corporate debt funds, your liquid funds, your low duration fund, your credit risk fund. Now, these are categorized based on the risk the funds will take while investing a customer's money. If a fund is showing you a lesser return, this could be a safe fund. If a fund is showing you higher rate of return, it means the fund could be taking more risk in the process of investment. There is another difference when it comes to the debt funds when you compare it with a fixed deposit. A fixed deposit has a tenure. You can book a fixed deposit for one month or one year or five years or any tenure that you like. Whereas in case of a debt fund, an investor can come in any time and he can walk out of this fund any time. That means it is open for purchase as well as redemption on a daily basis provided the markets are open on that day. This system can work only when there is a demand for money. This system can work only there are buyers and sellers on a daily basis. If anything of these three is not there in the market, then system can backfire. That is what went wrong in the market. And Franklin Templeton was forced to close six of its debt funds. So here are these six schemes which Franklin Templeton India has closed on. It means nobody will be able to buy the units of the schemes or they will be able to sell the units of the schemes. The current assets of these debt funds are frozen at this point of time. What does it mean? Does it mean that the investors who have invested money in these schemes, will they stand to lose money? Will they not get back their money? Do they have to book their losses? The answer is no. The investors will get back their money. The only problem is they will not get back as and when they want, but they will get back as per a process that will be followed by the fund managers of this scheme. So here afterwards, the fund will start sending you money every month as per the collections it makes from its borrowers. It will collect interest, it will collect the maturity proceeds. The maturity happens at different points of time as and when this money keeps coming into the fund and it will distribute it back on a monthly basis to all its investors 
according to the proportion of number of units these people are holding. When all the money collected is completed, the fund closes once for all. Depending on the scheme that you have invested in, this could last anywhere from a couple of months to maybe for three to four years maximum. All transactions that would have happened with these funds, for example, if there is an SIP, the installment will not be collected. If there is an STP, amount will not be transferred. If there is an SWP, amount will not be transferred. Every transaction which is done by an investor on a monthly basis or regular basis will stop. Only the transactions will be the fund paying back to investor. That's the only thing which will remain. Now this situation has happened because of COVID-19 induced liquidity crunch in the market. If liquidity improves going forward, you may need not worry to collect the money for such a long period of three to four years. Instead, if the situation normalizes, the fund managers may liquidate their assets at an early period of time and pay back you all the money that they have collected from you. Do you stand to lose any interest because of this? No, you stand to get all the money along with whatever is the coupon rate which is due to you. What is the risk for you in this? The only risk is the default risk. The default risk of the borrower not paying the interest or borrower not able to pay you the principal. That remains and that's the genuine risk the investors always have to bear and in this scheme too, that risk will remain with you. But other than that, as an investor, you have nothing to worry about because this fund has been closed by Franklin Templeton. There may be a question in your mind. Franklin Templeton says the situation developed because of COVID-19 induced liquidity crisis. If this were to be the truth, why did it happen only to Franklin Templeton schemes? Why it did not affect other asset management companies or other debt funds? To know the answer, we have to go back a few weeks before or one or two years before. All the schemes which Franklin Templeton stopped today were the darlings of investors in the distributing community. They were generating very good rate of return and everybody was very, very happy. As I said in the beginning, when the yields are higher than normal, it only means the fund is taking more and more risk to generate a high return. When we talk about high risk, high reward, the investors will only hear high rewards they conveniently forget the high risk which comes along with that. So when you take more and more risk, it's obvious that at some point of time, this risk will play out and it will come back and bite the investor and the funds together. This is exactly what happened a few weeks before. Franklin Templeton had exposure to Vodafone papers, it had exposure to Yes Bank, it had exposure to Divan Housing Finance and several other companies where the investment went wrong. To save itself and to save the investors, Franklin Templeton immediately created separate folios and made the valuation of this paper to zero. The investing community and the distributors were heartbroken. What actually happened was the trust the investing community had with Franklin Templeton scheme was broken in a moment. When this trust got broken, the distributors as well as the investor started putting redemption pressure on various schemes of Franklin Templeton mutual fund. In a normal course of time, this would have run without any particular problem. But these are unusual times. There is no demand for corporate papers. Even papers which are of good quality, there are no buyers. Now, when you are faced with a situation that the investors do not trust you, distributors do not trust you, and there is no liquidity in the market, Franklin Templeton was left with only one alternative. To use its cash reserves, it used it. To borrow to the extent permissible, it borrowed it. And when the reductions went beyond its control, it had no option but to close this particular scheme. The only other option which was available to it was to liquidate good quality paper in the funds and pay the redemptions which were coming in. But that would have done 
an injustice to all the investors who will be left behind in the schemes because they will be left with all the bad paper. Instead of that, Franklin Templeton took a very, very good decision to close these schemes. It is ultimately in the good interest of all the investors who have pumped in money in this particular scheme. I would say this is a great thing the Franklin Templeton did. When trust is broken and when liquidity operates, it can happen to any mutual fund house. The good thing is all other mutual funds at this point of time are having good trust of their investors and the distribution community. Liquidity is a problem for everyone. The banks, the Reserve Bank are doing everything best to address this liquidity crisis. As long as the liquidity remains, people have nothing to be worried about. At this point of time, all that the investors have to do is exercise patience, do not get panicked, do not unnecessarily go in for the schemes and put redemptions. Nothing is going to go wrong. Have confidence in the system and everything will be okay in months and years ahead. This problem too will pass. What are the lessons to investors from this episode? Number one lesson is debt funds too will have some risk which is built into it. It's not that it is 100% risk free. It has its risk. Lesson number two. When you see high yield on any investment, always see it with a suspicion. If everything goes well, you will get your yield, you are a happy person. But when the yields rise, when the risks build up, at some point of time, it always comes back and haunts you. So when the yields are rising, always see that with a suspicion and always maintain a good exposure control. Have less exposure for instruments which give you high returns and have more and more exposure to instruments which will give you slightly lesser return. Because when you get slightly lesser return, there is safety of capital. When the interest rates are higher or when the yields are higher, the risk of you losing capital will also rise proportionately. There is a third lesson for the investors. The lesson is, do not take your decision based on past performance of the schemes. Yes, you can look at the rear view mirror, but you are driving in the front. To drive in the front, a rear view mirror can only be a guide. But if you keep on looking at the rear view mirror and keep moving forward, it will result in a disaster. So do not look at how many stars this fund is having. Look at how much returns you have. The best way to handle this situation is always get the help of a professional financial advisors. If you want to work with a professional financial advisor, my services are always open to you. My WhatsApp number is shown here on the screen. At any point of time, you can contact me for any of the professional works that you may need in the field of investment. Dear viewers, if you like the subject that I discussed with you today, please like this video and share it with your near and dear ones. If you are watching this episode for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for this channel, please press the subscribe button and press the bell icon. I will be back with you with one more topic and one more video very, very soon. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.